The military doctrine paper Mind War by NSA General Michael Aquino and Colonel Paul E. Vallele is a crucial piece of the puzzle of the current Great Deception. Written in 1980 at the beginning of the Reagan administration, while Vallely and Aquino were working at the Presidio, headquarters of the 7th Psychological Operations Group, divulging classified information or technology can be punished by life imprisonment. So when writing about current technology that is secret, military strategists commonly use the ruse of talking about existing systems as being future technology or veil their comments so that only the select few will see the deeper meaning. It is standard practice to produce an unclassified version that can be published publicly and a classified version that is more explicit or in many cases contradictory. In other words, often what is printed publicly are lies. Despite that practice, the public version of this very historical document contains the following revealing quotes by the authors. Quote, in Vietnam, our psychological warfare failed because it was outmatched by the psyops of the enemy. Our psyop did not really change the minds of the enemy population, nor did it defend the U.S. population at home against the propaganda of the enemy. Furthermore, the enemy's psyop was so strong that it, not bigger armies or better weapons, overcame all of the weapon systems we fielded. The lesson is not to ignore our own, our own psyop capability, but rather to change it and strengthen it so that it can do precisely that kind of thing to our enemy in the next war for the mind. Psychotronic research is in its infancy, but the U.S. Army already possesses an operational weapon system to, designed to do what Lieutenant Colonel J.B. Alexander would like ESP to do, except this weapon system uses existing communications media. It seeks to map the minds of neutral and enemy individuals and then to change them in accordance with U.S. national interests. It must strengthen our national will to victory and it must attack and ultimately destroy that of our enemy. It both causes and is affected by physical combat, but it is a type of war which is fought on a far more subtle basis as well in the minds of the nation, national populations involved. If we so do not so attack the enemy's will until he reaches the battlefield, his nation will have strengthened it as best it can. We must attack that will before it is locked in place. We must instill in it a predisposition to inevitable defeat. Strategic mind war must begin the moment war is considered to be inevitable. It must seek out the attention of the enemy nation through every available medium and it must strike at that nation's potential soldiers before they put on their uniforms. It is in their homes and their communities that they are most vulnerable to mind war. Was the U.S. defeated in the jungles of Vietnam or was it defeated in the streets of American cities? In its strategic context, mind war must reach out to friends, enemies, and neutrals alike across the globe neither through primitive battlefield leaflets and loudspeakers of PSYOP, nor through the weak, imprecise, and narrow efforts of psychotronics, but through the media possessed by the U.S., which have the capabilities to reach virtually all people on the face of the earth. For the mind is to believe in its own decision. It must feel that it made these decisions without coercion. Coercive measures used by the operative consequently must not be able to be detected by ordinary means. There is no need to resort to mind-weakening drugs such as those explored by the CIA. In fact, the exposure of a single such method would do unacceptable damage to Mind War's reputation for truth. Existing PSYOP identifies purely psychological factors which suggest appropriate idioms for messages. Doctrine in this area is highly developed and the task is basically one of assembling and maintaining individuals and teams with enough expertise and experience to apply the doctrine effectively. This, however, is only the sociological dimension of target receptiveness measures. There are some purely natural conditions under which minds may become more or less receptive to ideas, and mind war should take full advantage of such phenomenon 
as atmospheric electromagnetic activity, air ionization, and other natural conditions under which minds may become more or less receptive to ideas, and mind wars should take full advantage of such phenomena as atmospheric electromagnetic activity, air ionization, and extremely low frequency waves. If we do not accept Excalibur, then we relinquish our ability to inspire foreign cultures with our morality. If they then desire moralities unsatisfactory to us, we have no choice but to fight them on a more brutish level." End quote. The following footnote to ELF is included. Extremely low frequency waves. ELF waves are up to a hundred hertz and are more naturally occurring, but they can also be produced artificially, such as the Navy's Project Sanguine for submarine communication. Extremely low frequency waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses, yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion. Infrasound vibration up to 20 hertz can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, or beta waves, inclining an audience toward everything from alertness to passivity. Infrasound could be used tactically, as ELF waves endure for great distances, and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. The footnote mentioned is very on ELF is very fairly specific and admits that it is to be used in conjunction with television and radio. In short, the extremely low frequency mind war attack signal will be piggybacked on a TV carrier wave to target civilian populations in their homes to instill feelings of fear and terror prior to the start of a conflict. In short, shock and awe. The power of extremely low frequency to change the mood and thoughts of enemy populations was well understood by the U.S. PSYOP forces, and to General Aquino and Colonel Vallely as in particular. If these weapons were turned against friendly populations, it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to detect their influence. Colonel Vallely holds many hard-right views on the Vietnam War, as well as aspects of American society that he would like to change. Now a Fox military analyst, he told Fox House liberal Alan Combs that, quote, we are not going to permit a Shia majority victory in the forthcoming theater of a free election in Iraq. Worse, he said, quote, Iran and Syria are next. It's easy to do. Israel is already prepared to take Iran down, unquote. Combs followed up by asking whether he thought a Judeo-Christian holy war against Muslims was such a great idea. Valerie replied, quote, That's what's going on. If you don't understand that, then you don't get it. Unquote. 